NX007. Always thought there was something mys mysterious about Richard. <laughs> Secret agent. <laughs> oh, he was. <laughs> Friends, because of the overwhelming support that the family got in response to Richard's passing away, we are unable to read all the tributes. And, uh, but what we are going to do is to compile a book in memory of Richard Osborne. And we are going to put all those tributes into that book. It will be given to the family and I'm sure copies will be made available to those who would like to read or go through those tributes. So we apologize in advance. Um, please don't feel left out if your tribute is either digested or cr uh, uh, trimmed or not read at all. I want to call on Hadley Osborne. Richard's stepson to come forward and read some of the tributes to him. Thank you. Thank you, Ian, and good afternoon all. <coughs> that I, for those that I have not met yet or had the pleasure of meeting in person, I'm Hadley Osborne. I'd like to read out a few messages sent to read on behalf uh, of the family, um, and then I'll say a few words afterwards. Um, this is only a snippet of the amount that was sent to us over the last couple of days. This is a very sad day for everyone here. I would like to share some fond me memories and personal attributes that made my brother such a wonderful person. This is from Basil. Richard was 19 years younger than me and I think at times he felt that he didn't really know me and wondered who this brother was. He left the farm in Kenya when he was about eight years old. So really, we only began to get to know each other when I came to South Africa many years later. Richard was a character. He always had a smile on his face, always seemed to have a new fishing tale to tell. His easygoing, relaxed nature made him a delight to be around. He had a lot of friends that, made up, that he made at both Happy Wanderers and White Mountain Resorts. He was very family oriented and was keen to share this time with his sisters, Kathy and Margie, whenever possible. Earlier this year, Rose and I decided to visit family in Australia. When Richard heard this, he was determined to arrange a get together so the five siblings would all stay under the same roof again. He organized a lovely large house at Quinn's Rock and a wonderful time was had by all the family. The five siblings being Bob, our eldest brother, Richard, Kathy, Margie, and myself. One of the things I respected the most about Richard was that even though he had such a carefree attitude, he also had a very serious side. He and Jenny ran White Mountain and Happy Wanderers like clockwork. Some of my brother's favorite things beside his friends were golf and the outdoors. He loved going on holiday to places where there was always good fishing and he had bought a camper van to enable him to travel further afield. When the sardines came, he used to drive up and down the coast with his boats, etc. And when he had the opportunity, he often told stories about the fish he caught. Some were true, but pretty much most were exaggerated. <laughs> I will miss you, my brother, more than, other, than words can say. I miss his kindness, his support and humor. Richard was always there if I needed someone to talk to or needed some advice. We should all be thankful for knowing him and for his time on earth. I hope that everyone here remembers how wonderful a person he was and that his memory will continue to live on in our hearts and minds. This is from Rose. Uh, sorry, no, from Jeanette. Dear Uncle Richard, I will always think of you with that mischievous glint in your eye and the slight smile that suggests innocence but carries a hidden tease, your heart dancing along with it. 
a heart that was meant, that was, and to me, will always be kind, sweet, gentle, observing, allowing, respectful, and loving. We have so many happy and wonderful memories of you and feel so blessed and grateful that you were a part of my life. Thank you for loving me. I will feel you in my heart always. And to quote Rumi, out beyond ideas of wrong, doing and right doing, there is a field. I'll meet you there. When the soul lies down in the grass, the world is too full to talk about. With all my love, Jeanette. There's one here from Goth, but I believe you're going to talk a little bit later. Would you want me to read this out? Read it out? Okay. Our dear Jenny, Hadley and Andrea, our deepest sympathy for the loss of our dearest friend, Rich. When we think of happies, we think of the 38 years we had, which were wonderful years. We spent the happiest times in Kelso and talk about them constantly. Four generations of the Taylors went through happies. Rona's dad and mom celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary there, and of course Rona's dad got fraught due to the people like Willie and Richard. Richard used to pry the old man with cookie tots. Cocky tots. I've been away for too long, yeah. <laughs> Due to people like Willie and Richard, I'm uh, sorry, and let him relate his fishing stories. Richard's latest trick was to get Garth tipsy at the Bry, bring in Bry, and then watch him stagger back to the site. That was a sight to remember. I've seen that. We, all, we always felt safe at Happy's and made many new friends, which we still keep in contact with today. We could never have experienced this if it is not for you, Jenny and Richard. We know Richard is in heaven with Ma Osborne and getting ready to start another project as it was close to the December holidays. Jenny, may you receive the courage and strength to get through this very tough period. You were the best thing that happened to Richard. Without you, he could not have got Happies and White Mountain to what they are today. Yes, we're gonna miss Rich, and he has left a big hole in Garth around his life. We will see him again, and hopefully has organized another Happies in Heaven. I can't wait to join him and see what he has done there. Jenny, please remember that if there's anything Garth and I can do, please make contact and Garth will be there. Please look after yourself and may God bless and keep you eternally. Love to you all. Rona, Garth, Sean, Kirsty and their families. It's from Marianne Stolls. Dear Jenny and family, our sincere condolences go out to you and your family for the very sad loss of, our dear, of my dear cousin and friend Richard. He will be greatly missed, lovingly remembered and never forgotten. May he now rest in peace. I always had a very close, I was always very close to Richard. He was like a brother I never had, even though we didn't see much of him. We'll never forget how kind and good he was to me and my mum, my mum and my dad. We have very fond memories of him to treasure. Lots of love and prayers. We are thinking of you this sad time. From Johnny, Marion and family. This one comes all the way from Paris. Dear Jenny, I just received the brave sad announcement about Richard's memorial service sent from the caravan park, but I wanted to write you separately. I don't expect any response because I know how, what an exhausting, stressful, sad time this must be for you. My mum and sister are all so grateful to Margaret for keeping us informed of Richard's health status and of the final sad news. We have kept him and your whole family in our prayers for months and still pray for you. As I have said before, we are so grateful for your presence in South Africa, for the love and care that you have shown mum to your mum and for your warm welcome generosity every time we can. It has always been such a pleasure to engage in gentle ribbing and teasing with Richard to hear of your plans and per per perseverance. I shall never forget how he came when my dad had his heart attack and how you both helped my mum during this sudden sad time. I was so impressed that Richard seemed unfazed, not anxious, when we had lunch with you the last time. He was ever optimistic. I will miss that and his humor. I'm so sorry the cancer progressed so quickly, and I'm happy to hear that he died peacefully, surrounded by his family. Up to you all. This is from one of Richard's oldest friends. To our dear friend, Ozzy. It is with great sadness, it is with you that we are mourning. This was never on our horizon. To me, you will always be as strong as an ox. However, when I think of you, there are always many memories that spring to mind. Here are a couple. 
Back in 1971, those strange army days in Volfus Bay, when you and I determined to have fishing as a sport on Wednesdays, we would scheme all, up all sorts of ideas, but always landed up in the cleaning squad. You did, being your normal ten yourself, t t tenacious self, get it right after I left. Then there was a famous Neisner trip where you were, on a number of occasions, trying to impress Marlene, I think, with your sorry, Marlene, uh, I think, with your designer tracksuit pants pulled up under your arm <laughs> armpits, so that <laughs> I should read these things before I read it out, uh, armpits, so that the legs uh, would not get wet. Not to mention your floating stokies. <laughs> you never did let her forget how she loved that boating weekend. Then there was this old derelict barge which you fell in love with, followed by the rest of the Cape Town boat memorabilia. You bought it, transported it by road, and loaded it into a room, made it into a respectable bar, and did your absolute best to prevent it from escaping back into the high seas again. What a man, a truly great and loyal friend, kind, generous, loving, wonderful sense of humor, with a distinctive chuckle, a very successful businessman, with a work ethic and admired and, and, and. Thank you for the wonderful memories. Your passing is a great loss to us, and you'll be remembered forever. May you rest in peace. To Jenny and the family, our sincere condolences, our thoughts are with you. We are very sorry. We could not be with you here on this day. All our love, Ron, Molly, Tarek, and Shay. Hello, Jenny. I'm absolutely gutted, gutted to hear the tragic news. I didn't know Richard was ill otherwise. Otherwise, I would have been in touch before now. My heartfelt condolences to you and your families. You and Richard did so for Martin and I when I was suffering from this terrible disease, when he was suffering from this terrible disease. And it is awful to know that he was left in a similar manner. My heart goes out to you at this tragic time. You are in my thoughts and prayers. Love, Dawn Orslu. Hi, Jenny. It's great, with great sadness that Dee and, and I, Mandy, Doug, and Andrew, our grandchildren read of Richard's passing. He was a wonderful person a true friend to everyone, and he'll always be remembered fondly. Best wishes, Malcolm and D. King. I'm so sorry to hear of Richard's death. Please accept Jeff and my condolences. Richard was a great man with a big heart, a generous spirit. He will be missed by all who are fortunate to know. Love Jeff and Kath Wickers. Joff. I couldn't read your writing, so I typed it out. <laughs> Dear Jenny, so sorry to hear of Richard's passing. You have lost a great husband and a wonderful friend to all. See your condolences, Brian, Carol King, and family. I think this comes from um, Tanika, uh, Richard's goddaughter. Good afternoon, family and friends. I would first like to start off with a small poem that I found. Dear Uncle Richard, I am glad you're my godfather, someone to hold my hand, a friend if I should need one, who will love and understand. I just want to say thank you, as you really are the best. With you by my side, I know that I have been truly blessed. There are so many memories that I have to cherish, but these are just a few that I love the most. I remember when you, Auntie Jenny, and I would sit together at the Rect Heron, in the usual places that you both sit at, <laughs> of due course, and would order your beer and I would have a passion fruit and lemonade. How you would always pull on my ears whenever you would say hello and goodbye to me. The times when I got to see you just about every day when you used to have Happy Wanderers as our home. But I will forever cherish my last memory that I have of you, sitting on your chair in your cottage at White Mountain, drinking your cup of tea while dunking your biscuits, and seeing you and Auntie Jenny go for a little drive in the golf cart all around White Mountain Music Festival and seeing that you, you both have a smile on your faces. I will always, I will forever hold your, our memories close to my heart. Thank you so much for being such an amazing godfather to me. I will love you forever, Uncle Richard. From Erdley, one of Richard's many friends. Richard, fondly known to me as Ozzy. We grew up as teenagers at Happy Wanderers and used to get up to all sorts of mischief. His mum, Mary, kept us in check with um, stern warnings. Oz would always tease me about my VW, which he used on the, on, the, on the beach for many fishing trips. He said it was infested with cockroaches, I'm sure due to some leaving bait in the bonnet. When Ali and I decided to get married in 1980, I turned to Ozzy to be my best man. 
He calmed my nerves whilst driving me to the church in Kwame Nomri by sharing a beer. Ali and I were privileged to be able to join Ozzy, Jenny on many family holidays, especially Mata River Mouth with Lorraine and friends. This was his favorite getaway spot where he and Jenny used to fish harder than anyone else and release plenty of stress. Rest in peace, my friend. We will always miss you terribly. From Tony and Yvette Penfold. We learn a lot from the book of Matthew. Total humility, the value of the cornerstone and the sound foundation being a good example. Loyalty, love, faith and trust. Richard epitomizes these virtues in everyday life. Always quiet and reserved, he was also unflappable, just got on with things. His company was always so easy to enjoy, even when sharing his honeymoon space some 20 years ago. I still can't believe you agreed to that. Jenny, you and Rich have been an amazing couple, tied together not only by the hip, but also by all your business, family and charitable interests. Celebrate these years you had together on earth and the undeniable fact that in time you will be together again. All dreams eventually become memories and together you will have many of these. God's richest blessings on you, your family, your fantastic circle of friends going forward. Tons of love, Tony and Yvette. Uh, as Eon said before, there's been so many more to, to read out and I do apologize, I can't actually do it. But there's a little something 17 pages actually from me um, um, <clears throat> I asked for vodka inside here and it didn't work <laughs> firstly I'd just like to say thank you thank you on behalf of the family and a number of people for their support to Richard and mom over the last five months I would like to show our sincere appreciation and thanks to Richard's oncology team and staff, especially Dr. Adam McLeave and Wendy Oosterberg, aka The Terrorist. Also to mention our admiration of grat and gratitude to all of the staff at Parklands Hospital, great thanks too to Shannon Kane and his colleagues from the South African Paramedic Service. We would like to thank you our family, our friends, our extended family, including all our staff for the, hundreds, uh, for the hundreds of well wishes over the past few months, even when we tried to keep what was happening to Richard as low key. We would also like to thank you for all the condolences from all around the world, as far afield as the US, the UK, Singapore, Australia, and New Zealand. I would personally like to say thank you to you, to my family that have been here when I couldn't. to support mum and Richard through all of this. Andrea, Brendan, Grandpa, Jean, Margie and Bryce, Basil and Rose. I don't know what I would have done without you here. To the rest of our family and friends, I say thank you. Kathy and Eon and Ryan, and to the many more, I guarantee I've left off completely by accident. I was gonna mention something about a tie, but I seem to be the only one that was gonna put one on. So, and we know Richard doesn't like ties, so it's a good thing. I first met Richard when trying to impress a girl on this beach at the age of nine years old. And it's not that story, guys. <laughs> Jumping out of the jungle gym on the beach and breaking my arm while on holiday. He knew nothing about first aid, but tied an apron around my neck as a sling. He also put some bricks down next to me on my bed, on the floor, for my arm to go between and kept steady before I went off to hospital in the morning. I'm sure that my sister Andrea is gonna have a slightly different version to this, but when I was at the age of 15, 16, we were caravanning at Happy's, just behind the swimming pools. And I watched mom walk to the door of the caravan, all dressed up for the first time since my dad had, bought, had died, and asked us, how do I look? Andrea freaked out. You can't go out, blah, 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 blah. I switched off. Of which mum replied shortly after, Andrea, it's only dinner. It's not like I'm going to marry him. <laughs> Several months later, Richard sat with mum in our house in Pantown and asked if he could speak to us. We sat down waiting in anticipation 
and Richard asked if he could marry mom. All I remember was a loud shriek coming from Andrea as she almost strangled our Siamese cat. <laughs> Two other stories that came to mind that I just wanted to illustrate to you, the Richard, that Richard, we all know for different reasons. Firstly, at 17 or 18, I got quite drunk one night before coming home at 10 o'clock, but convinced mom and Richard when I walked in that I was pretty sober. Long story short, but I had fallen asleep on the couch and someone woke, somehow I woke up still pissed, chasing little men around the room and pulling, pot plants out of the, uh, pulling plants out of pots. Mom was apparently freaking out and Richard's solution just put him to bed. Next morning, he asked mom to cook up the greasiest fry ever that she had ever made with extra oil and I had to eat it before I was allowed to go anywhere. And then while I was showering, Richard, with his mate, Garth, arrived unsuspectingly. One yanked back the curtain, and the other one threw a bucket of ice-cold water on me. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Going forward, Granny O continuously gave reference to the pot plant incident, and even gave me pot plants as presents. <laughs> Secondly, he called me on the Sunday before the 2007 Rugby Super Rugby Final while I was in England. Richard, what are you doing next weekend? Uh, I don't know, watching the Bulls lose to the Sharks, hopefully, probably at the walkabout in London. How about watching it live in Durban? Seriously? Awesome. <laughs> then the penny dropped. I was applying for my British passport at the time, and my South African passport was one I sent to UK immigration as my identification. Richard, I have a problem. I can't, as I don't have a passport at the moment, and Richard and immediately, Hadley, don't make your problems mine. You want to do it, just sort it. Needless to say, I was on a plane on Thursday night to watch the final with him and mum. Would have been an awesome, it would have been awesome if Richard's beloved Sharks had actually won in the final minutes to just to cap everything he'd just done for us. Or for me. In late 2007, I decided to change my surname to Osborne. While I might not have been Richard's biological son, he has been a father figure for me for longer than my late father. And my only regret with Richard is not going against his witches and calling him dad. I will carry his name for as long as I live. And so will my four and a half year old daughter, Jessie, probably until she's married. To sum it all up, Richard and I were two opposites. With me, always so much to say, as you can uh, quite clearly point out, and him, a man of few words. Thank you, Richard. And thank you for you, for letting me blabber on. Richard, thank you for being such a big part of my life, loving me, and sometimes giving me a kick up the butt when I needed it. You have supported me, whether close or far, and I'm so proud to carry your surname with me forever. I just hope that when you look down on me, you will be proud of the man I've become. You don't realize exactly how much you influenced my life. I love you with all my heart. Your son, Hadley, and granddaughter, Jessie. P.S. Jessie wants her nose back and asks if you could please look after her mice in heaven, antique crackers, and dash. I'm going to ask my mom to come up if she's willing to read something that she's put together for Richard. Thank you very much for your time.